Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here with another Travel Trailer Basics video. Today's basic question is, can you use a travel trailer to go camping in the winter? So let's talk about that. So winter is upon us. We're now into January of 2022. And you might be asking yourself, you know, do I really have to wait until April or May to go camping if I'm here in the Northern Hemisphere in Canada? Or could I perhaps take my rig out to go camping um, in the winter? So I'm not going to talk about full timing. I have no expertise in that. I'm simply going to talk about what to consider if you are thinking of taking your camper out for a, uh, uh, you know, a, a brief temporary um, getaway. So there's a couple of key elements that we're going to talk about. Uh, one element is going to be safety. Uh, the second element is going to be warmth. And then of course, the last element is going to be uh, utilities and practicality. So let's start off by talking about warmth. So you've got to your win winter camping destination. You're going inside your camper. It's a nice sunny afternoon. And you think, oh, it's not too bad in here, you know. I can't even see my breath. But then you have to really stop and think about, hmm, it's going to get a lot colder at night. How am I going to stay warm in here? Um, and that's our next topic. So some campers are, are more rated for winter camping. If you check out my video on whether or not trailers are insulated, I talk a lot about, um, you know, the different types of insulation and how effective they may or may not be. I've shared on the channel that in our camper, uh, we have stayed in it overnight in the driveway down to like minus 20 Celsius, and we stayed pretty comfortable in here. Um, but if you're going to be going away for a weekend, if you're going to be going away for a week, you've really got to think about how are you going to stay warm. Obviously, when you go to bed, I don't have any here today, but you're going to want to have some nice sheets, nice blankets, you know, lots and lots of stuff to keep you cozy. But then you got to think about your heating sources. Most rigs are going to have a furnace of some sort. And this is our furnace. It's a little uh, suburban blown air furnace system, runs off of propane, off the propane tank at the front of the trailer. This little uh, furnace, I've talked about it in other videos, can get this little camper that's about 100 square feet inside. Uh, up to a comfortable temperature of between 60 and 70 Fahrenheit, or around 15 to 20 to 21 Celsius, usually within a couple of minutes. Um, it, it, uh, even though it's here at the back of the rig, it gets the entire camper pretty toasty fairly quickly. However, it is a little noisy. <laughs> the fan kicking on and off, if you're a light sleeper, that's going to be an issue for you. And then the other element with this uh, furnace is, of course, going to be um, propane. So you really got to make sure if you are going to be using that propane heater that you make sure you've got a good supply of propane. On our camper, we've only got the 120 pound tank. Um, some rigs can be set up to run two 20 pound tanks and you can have a little switch to switch between them. Some rigs even can run 20, I've even seen some that can run 30 pound tanks. Um, in the case of us with just the single 20 pounder, we will bring this one completely full and then we bring a secondary one just in case this one runs out. Um, it's very hard to say how much propane you're going to go through, um, but even for us doing two or three nights, if it's going to get way below freezing at night, we make sure we've got lots of propane. Now, another option I would strongly suggest is going to be a little portable ceramic heater like this. Um, I do not have a lot of experience with, uh, with Mr. Buddy heaters and propane heaters, so I'm not going to talk about those today. If you have tips and hints on uh, propane portable heaters, go ahead and Post those in the comments below. But this is an electric ceramic heater. I picked this up at Canadian Tire for, I think, like 40 bucks. And basically, uh, you've got a, a block of ceramic in there with some uh, some metal fins. And it runs a current through. Uh, and again, I'm not an expert on this, but it runs a current through it. Everything gets hot. And there's a little fan in the back that pushes that heat out the front. It's got various heat settings. You've basically got like a 500 watt or 1,000 watt and then you've got like an energy saving setting, and then you've got your thermostat that you can dial in and out left and right. Runs off of 110, so uh, you're either gonna need a really good inverter, which means you better have really good batteries, um, or a really good solar system to keep them charged, or uh, shore power where you're going. Uh, and typically, if we're gonna go winter camping, most of the provincial parks are closed. Those that are open, you're gonna have shore power on your site, providing the power doesn't go out. But this little sucker puts out a ton of heat. And we try to use this as our main heating source if we're going to do winter camping. 
Uh, it can actually make it kind of sweaty in here, to be honest. Uh, I've got up in the middle of the night when it's been minus 10 outside, and uh, our camper is not a four-season camper, but even with that, uh, I had to turn this sucker down because it was roasting us alive. What we typically do is try to set this to do most of the work if we've got shore power, and then I go over to the thermostat, and I basically kind of you know, look at the temperature that the space heater is kind of keeping it at, and then I set my thermostat just below that. So for example, if my electric heater is keeping it comfortably around 70 in here, and at night you could probably go down a little bit more, maybe 65, 67, depending on your preference, then what I typically do is try to move the slider to the thermostat uh, to come on just a little bit below 70. That way, the if the for some reason the electric heater is not doing the trick, uh, the propane heat will come on to sort of compensate it and back it up. Um, this rig is not insulated underneath, so if you've got a lot of wind, that's going to really wick the heat out of the trailer a lot faster. So I like to have the combination uh, of the propane and the electric uh, to keep things uh, toasty inside. And there's lots of other things that you can do in terms of, you know, covering your windows with Reflectix. I'm not going to talk about that today. You can get those weird cushiony, fuzzy looking things that you can stick in your roof vents uh, to keep the heat in. Uh, again, I, I'm not a full timer. I'm not an expert in full time camping in the winter, a uh, full time living in the winter in a camper. But uh, I had, do have some experience with taking the rig out in the winter for short trips. And uh, usually just having a good heat source inside kind of does the trick, really. The next element uh, in this whole situation, of course, is safety. And when I talk about safety, I'm talking about two things. First of all, towing in the winter and those sorts of safety considerations. And then, of course, safety considerations for where you're going camping. So let's start off with the towing element. Um, if you've got a truck like the one behind me that's got you know pretty beefy tires, uh, a nice lift kit on it so it's fairly high, a good 4x4, uh, set up and, and a good engine and everything else, then chances are going camping in the winter with your trailer and towing it to and from your site um, is going to be a little safer and a little easier. You know, if you end up with an inch or two of fluffy snow, you're not really going to have a, a big deal. Uh, it's also probably going to make it less likely that you're going to lose control of that trailer and, and end up sliding into a, a dangerous situation. And heaven forbid, if the trailer was to get stuck, you might have a better job pulling it out with a truck like this. However, if you're going to be, uh, you know, super gutsy <laughs> and going out in a, a tent trailer or a pop-up camper or maybe even a little A-liner or something like that and you're towing it with, uh, I don't know, a minivan or a small SUV, then you really have to stop and ask, is this going to be a good idea dependent on the road conditions, right? The winter weather is very unpredictable. There could be freezing rain. There could be snowfall. Um, and of course, some areas don't really get a lot of snowy cold weather i get that but uh, you know if you're here in canada and you're going to be going camping in the winter you really need to stop and think about how safe it is for you to be getting to and from your campsite because the other thing you also need to think about is that okay you might be able to safely get down the highways with no problems but some of these campgrounds are not really that well maintained in the winter and if you're going to be super gutsy and go boondocking well then it's even bigger risk of those roads you know, getting snowed in and getting icy. So um, yes, it's it's great to think about the trailer and what you're going to have to do to actually physically camp, but I think you can't lose sight of the elements of actually hooking up, towing, and getting to and from the campsite. And heck, even when you're at the campsite, if you've got to go and get supplies from somewhere or you want to go for a walk or go for a day trip, again, you've got to think, is my vehicle well suited in case the weather gets really, really bad? So uh, that's another consideration. So the next thing that we're going to talk about in terms of winter camping that you got to think about is the practicality of your utilities, right? If you have a four season camper with that heated and closed underbelly, then chances are you could use your onboard water system. It's still a little risky depending on uh, how reliable your heat sources are, uh, but you've got to really think about the practicality of whether or not you can use your water supply. Now, if you're like us and you've got a basic camper that doesn't have an enclosed heated underbelly, then you have to think really, really hard about whether or not you want to uh, be using the onboard water system. Uh, because again, you're going to be using water for things like, you know, doing dishes, uh, for your cooking. You've got to think about your bathroom situation, because if it's going to get really, really cold, do you want to risk having that plumbing that may be exposed somewhere under the trailer breaking? 
And even if your plumbing doesn't freeze, then what if the pipes going into your holding tank freeze? What if the holding tank itself freezes? Typically the draw um, on a freshwater tank is at the base of the tank. And if it's exposed like it is on our camper, that's a great possibility of getting ice in there. And now you've got a big, big problem. What we typically do is we will go to locations uh, like Pinery Provincial Park, for example, that's open year round. They have bathroom facilities. So they have a heated uh, shower and washroom facility that you can use. Um, and then really, um, you know, you're covered in terms of your bathroom. And then in terms of cooking and having water in the rig, let me show you what we do. So this guy here is a five gallon pail or a five gallon jug, I guess you could say, with a nice little spigot on the front of it. Uh, you can get these at most hardware stores and uh, a lot of major retailers, but these things are fantastic. We used to use this in our pop-up camper because it didn't have much of an onboard water system of any kind. And a five gallon jug of water for dishes, for cooking, and maybe even for drinking with myself, my wife, and two small kids. One of these lasted us at least a day, um, and then I would have to go in and fill it up. So if you're going to use one of these, definitely think about how long you're going to be going away. Uh, think about whether or not the location you're camping at has a water supply. Um, again, I don't do a lot of boondocking. We go to provincial parks, our version of state parks, and there is always a water supply. Um, it may in the um, late fall and early spring be an outside spigot. If that's not switched on, then usually uh, in the um, shower and bathroom facilities, they have like a laundromat with a wash tub inside there. And you can pop this inside the tub and turn the water on um, and fill it up. But you've definitely got to really think long and hard about your water supply. What we typically do with this jug is we actually bring it beside our sink here and we just kind of prop it up and set it up beside the sink. And, uh, and then that way we can just turn the spigot on and off to have a little bit of a, a water supply. It's a little awkward because the sink's not that deep. Uh, you could, you know, hang it over the counter and fill things up underneath it. But the only thing I would say about that is that these spigots tend to drip a little bit. So make sure you've got a cloth or something under there to catch up the, the spills. Uh, we've even used this in the warmer weather. You can put it outside on a picnic table so that you've got access to water. Um, but yes, if you're going to do winter camping, don't forget, you're going to need water for your coffee, for your tea, uh, you know, for your cooking, for general drinking. And you could bring, you know, all kinds of cases of bottled water, I, I guess. Not going to get into a debate about uh, plastics, but uh, a nice container like this is, is certainly helpful. So sticking with the topic of... of uh, you know, convenience and utilities within your rig, um, you've also got to be mindful of the fact that a lot of the components in these campers are not really designed to be used in freezing cold temperatures. Anything on the rig that is plastic, you really want to be careful with that. Uh, if it's your roof vents, if you have a nice sunny day like today and you think, oh, I might open the roof vent, that plastic up there is very brittle. If it's got a bunch of ice around it, there is a possibility it could um, break. If you're tempted to use your onboard plumbing, maybe during the day, you know, it's getting nice and warm and only at night is it dropping below freezing. Well, that's a risk because in my experience, if anything on your camper is going to break, it's more likely to do it when it's really, really uh, cold out. Um, something else to consider is that, you know, hooking up the camper to your tow vehicle, setting up the weight distribution hitch, putting the, you know, the, uh, the chains on there and the breakaway cable and all that. That is a much bigger pain in the ass when it is freezing cold out there um, and certainly not as fun and not as easy. Um, but anything to do with your rig, whether it's the windows, the awning, the roof vent, maybe you've got an antenna like ours. We've got one of those shark fin antennas that you turn. All of those things can get a little bit delicate um, in the winter months. So you have to really weigh whether it's worth the risk of going out. Now, I'm not saying don't winter camp. We've done it, not been an issue, but you just have to be prepared that you might run into a couple of maintenance issues if you do um, choose to go ahead. Something else I should mention as it relates to the practicality of your uh, <laughs> amenities when you're winter camping is your dump station. Uh, even if you have an enclosed and heated underbelly, there's a pretty good chance that your gate valves um, and the actual dump station pipe itself is probably not that well insulated. And if you have liquids in here that have frozen into that gate valve, you could have a heck of a time getting the gate valve to open. 
you could potentially break something in the gate valve. And then you could run into a real problem getting the gate valve to shut. So again, uh, not saying it's impossible to winter camp and dump the trailer, but you've certainly got to take that into consideration if you're going to be using the, uh, the onboard plumbing during a, an impromptu camping trip. Uh, a lot of the places that we've gone winter camping, the dump station is still open. They won't have water running for rinsing, um, but you can still dump if you choose to. Also keep in mind, if you keep that sewer hose in your bumper like we do, if it gets cold and brittle, <laughs> be prepared. You might want to keep that in the trunk of your car or somewhere else where it might be a little bit warmer because I don't know about you folks, but I don't want Mr. Stinky Slinky to get a split in it while I'm trying to dump it in the winter. So just another, uh, another consideration. So let's start to wrap this video up and summarize. So I'm not trying to suggest that you shouldn't winter camp. I'm not trying to suggest that it's dangerous to winter camp. What I'm saying is, especially if you're new, if you're excited about the idea of winter camping, that's great. If you think you can do it safely and in a practical way, awesome. But before you all rush out and go and enjoy a weekend away camping in your rig in the winter, you have to stop and think about the extra challenges that are present. Challenges that are not really an issue when it's during the, uh, the warmer months. As I said earlier in the video, I'm not a, a full-timer. I know there are a lot of folks that live full-time in their rigs, some of them even in you know, the frozen north. And there's a lot of great videos on YouTube that talk about you know, using heat tape and uh, insulating your water supply line and, and how to you know, dump your tank safely in the winter and how to keep things practical inside and moisture down and all that. Those are very uh, extensive topics that don't really fit into a basic video like this. Um, but if you have tips and hints you want to share, go ahead, pop them in the comments below. Uh, as always, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.